tips and tricks today on how to take your teardrop trailer and turn it into your dream mobile fishing command center coming right up. Hey everyone, welcome to Playing With Sticks. We're gonna show you some tips and tricks on how we move our gear, storing things on the rooftop, underneath the RV, back on the tongue of the vehicle, using this thing as your mobile command center, your food is there, your bed is there, your gear is organized, you're ready to go. Let's catch some fish. On the rock of my given disaster Speed away from the holy mind Morning everyone. So we got in a little late last night, so I just jumped out to the river. First fish was a big hog. Didn't catch it. Second fish, pretty decent dolly, so I'm pretty excited to get out this morning. May and East are still asleep in the teardrop, so I'm hoping to get out before they even wake up. This guy behind us is getting his laps in this morning. So I don't know about you guys, but I think everybody has that one thing that just slows down time for them. That thing that just helps them to escape. And for me, that's fishing. Like this morning, getting out there on the river. Yeah, my intention is to catch a fish, but I don't care if I catch anything. The ultimate goal is just to see the things around, to experience the, the quietness, the stillness, the pursuit of mastering a craft. This morning on the water, I had to kind of be aware of time uh, to get back to May and East because if I wasn't, it would have just disappeared on me. They're chasing each other east. You see them swimming with their tails. Yesterday, I had planned to come out here. We were gonna take the teardrop out. We were gonna do some fishing. And I started convincing myself, do I wanna do that? I kinda of feel like I just need to stay home and relax, catch up on some house things. And like the pursuit of this sounded almost difficult. And then, you know, you do it. You force yourself to do it. And a couple minutes in, you're like, why would I have not done this? This was easy. This actually made me relax. It actually was uh, fulfilling. It was like life-giving. Quick fire up of the grill. We prepare these at home. We call these hobo meals. Basically just some sausage and some potatoes, peppers, cilantro, green onions, and then you top it off with some melted cheese and quick, easy. Mm -hmm. I met some nice fishermen back there who gave me some tips and it just makes me want to go out and help other people do things. If you're a fisherman, 
give people some tips. You don't have to keep all the secrets. You know, I'm on these rivers and I feel pretty good sometimes, but then you see people fishing next to you and they're catching more, hooking up more, and just those little bits of information helps you. Each time you go out, you gain a little more from the people around you. I just love that about small communities, especially the fishing community. All right, guys, let's head on out. We're gonna go get some coffee. Coffee? Yes, yes. Please. All right, let's go, guys. coffee shop right here is one of our all-time favorites. It's in an old church. With an RV, you're always a little hesitant. Is there RV parking allowed at the fishing spot? When I get in there, am I going to have to back out? Is it a one-way road with a terminus at the water and you gotta do the eh, 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 to get back out there? With a teardrop, you just, you take all the risks. You go straight in knowing if you get stuck, you can unhitch it, turn the teardrop around, turn the car around, hook it back up, get back out to your next fishing location. When inclement weather hits, you have a bed. When you need a shower, you pull it out. When you wanna eat, you eat. Everything that you need with you is there. The fly tying table is there. The mounting racks for your fly rods are there. PVC pipes are kind of the chosen version of carrying delicate material in Alaska just due to our inclement weather, the bears, the rocks that get kicked up. And I think you can start in this in a do-it-yourself way very affordably by buying some PVC pipe, adding some end caps to it, and mounting it to the top of your car creatively. Uh, you can go to Home Depot for like 25 bucks and they actually have a conduit mounting kit. It has the U braces, it has the end caps, and you just throw it up there. Putting these PVC rod holders on top of your roof probably is gonna cause some air resistance, some wind resistance. So moving them under your RV, moving them to the front of your teardrop and putting them right against the tongue is going to save you the wind resistance. I think one of the easiest and most affordable ways to mount and protect your rods is in the ceiling of your vehicle. There's many do-it-yourself versions. I think the one that looks easiest to me is where you put bungee cords up on the ceiling and just mount your rods that way. I have another picture here of somebody who mounted a curtain rod and then they use the curtain rings to hang up their rods. You can also buy a mount like this. These mounts are like 25 bucks uh, from Amazon or eBay. And I saw somebody who used the same mount and put it over the bed of their truck and mounted their rods that way. So another quick, simple solution are these suction mounted rod holders that mount on your window of your car. There's a really cheap version on eBay. I wanna say it's like 25, 35 bucks that goes up there. And then there's also a nicer one made by Inorax. I found this one on troutrageous.com. The next option you have is mounting on your hood and roof. The one I see most often is the Orvis mount. The Orvis one is mounted with suction cups. It's about $149. I also see magnetic mounts out there. Those ones are around $100. Before you go out building your PVC protective cases or hanging your rods from places in your vehicle or on top of the vehicle, one of the easiest ways is just to get a smaller fishing rod. We suggest the Cabela's stowaway rods. I think other companies make these too. So this is a typical rod holder. This is a Stowaway 6 from Cabela's. It's actually a six piece rod instead of a two or four piece, which makes it a lot smaller. You can see here, it's pretty small. You can throw this under your car seat. You can fit this anywhere. You won't even know it's with you. When we're out in the field and we want to get to the next fishing location quick, and we don't want to take our rod apart. You can just take it apart in one section, fold it in half, put it in here. You can keep the reel on it. So when you get out to the next location, your leader's already on there, your fly's already on there. The only thing we take off is the weight so it doesn't bang up on the pole, but otherwise you're ready to go. In places like Kodiak, Alaska, where you're trying to intercept the silver salmon right at the mouth of the river, coming out of the ocean, but yet you're still not hooking in, you chase them up river, you're still struggling, you always know they're going to end up at that lake at the top. And that's where it's perfect to pull out that kayak, that inflatable kayak and get out on the water. If you haven't seen our video, we have an inflatable kayak we love. It's practically made of steel, it is tough. It gets out on the water, we use it on the oceans, the rivers, the lakes. 